，好，英文课我们又见面了。基本上，呃，上课方式会跟上学期差不多，那有几点调整，带你们看一下哈。所以这个是，呃 ，Moodle 页面，那等一下带你们详细看。我们先看课纲的部分。这学期因为你们是大四的班级，所以 schedule 看起来会有点不一样。呃，相信你们已经都知道了，我只是提醒一下哈、哦。嗯，从十八周改成十四周，其中第十四周是期末考周，所以然后再扣掉期中考周，我们真正上课时间只有十二周。但是，呃，每周上课时数增加一节，所以上半学期三节课在这里，然后第四节课在电脑教室。过了期中考之后，变成两节课在这里，两节课在电脑教室。那因为两边都是我在教，所以我就把他们全部当做就是呃同样的课程，就不会特别细分了。上半学期，呃，期中考的考试范围是上个学期的内容，再加上新课本的第一单元跟第三单元。下半学期的期末考的考试内容就是。上半学期的内容，再加上第四单元和第五单元。那课本有一个单元我不会考，那就是第二单元。那跟上学期一样，期中考就是考阅读听力，期末考阅读听力外加一个写作。所以我们接近呃学期尾声也会上一个写作单元，让你们熟悉一下题型。那详细来说呢，这一周的进度是要介绍课程，我正在介绍，呃，然后待会儿会把你们的上学期期末考卷发回去，给你们一点时间看一下。我我所谓期末考卷就是写作的部分，呃，然后让你们有点时间看一下我改的地方，会呃把你们一个一个点名上来，跟我确认说没问题，嗯、呃，当做期末考的。那个 review 复习这样子，然后呢，因为我们今天有四节课，所以就直接开始上第一单元。那呃，一样我就不会特别去抓说一个单元要上多久，我这个只是这个进度只是排顺序，它不是排花多少时间。所以第一单元，然后第一单元上完会上第三单元，呃。第三单元上完会上第四单元，但是请注意第五周。我、哦、那天一大早要去集合校区参加国际研讨会，所以那一天课程从第三节开始上。啊、嗯，那前面两节我会另外找时间补。嗯，我还没决定哪一天，应该是某一个星期三，呃，早上或下午。啊、呃，然后就是看电影，所以邀请大家有空的话也可以来一起来看电影。第七周放假，呃，第八周期中考前我们放松一下，课堂上看电影。啊、呃，然后因为我们早上有三节课在这里，所以我们可以挑一部稍微长一点的电影来看。第九周统一期中考，呃，然后下半学期，如果考试范围的单元都上完的话，我们，呃，可以上写作的部分，然后写作的部分上完之后再上第二单元。第十三周考前那一周会做模拟考。啊、呃，然后第十四周统一期末考。OK， 进度大大概长这样子，有要提问吗
。好，诶，我要特别讲一下成绩的部分，成绩分配跟上学期一样，那个平时成绩吼。我基本上是看你们的参与程度啦，譬如说有时候我会请你们做一些英文的互动啊，呃，就是讨论啊什么的。不过如果你没办法来课堂上，不是没办法，如果你你不在课堂上，就很难参与嘛。嗯、呃，那如果是没办法不得已的话，当然就是可以请假就没事。但是如果你不来，然后也没有请假的话，那部分的平时成绩就没办法给你。嗯、um, ，我是用每周来算的，我们一周只会给你一张签到单嘛。嗯、um, ，然后你们也知道，按规定超过全学期三分之一以上缺席就直接当掉。十四周三分之一的话，超过三分之一就是五周。那平时成绩扣到第五周、第六周以下还在扣的话，就有点不合理嘛，都已经当掉了。所以，呃，如果你缺席五周，就就系统直接把你当掉，所以势必缺席四周，呃，还有一点平时，呃，就缺席四周的话，应该顶多扣到百分之四十嘛，平时成绩总共有百分之五十，缺席四周会扣到百分之四十，也就是说，如果你翘课一周，就会扣总成绩百分之十。OK， 所以嗯、呃，都已经最后一学期了，快要毕业了，请不要在那边精算说，我可以翘课几周还会过。基本上你翘课四周，你最高成绩，期中、期末的考满分只会拿六十。不能来的话就请请假，这个这个手续要去做。好，那另外一个点是说，啊、呃，因为这是音教中心的课，期中、期末的那个阅读、听力那个试卷我也没看过，你们考完之后我也不会拿到，成绩系统的部分我也没办法去调整，所以，嗯、呃，譬如说上学期，我有试图想要帮你们调一下分数，但是我也只能用猜的。因为我没办法控制你的期中、期末考成绩，嗯、um, ，我上学期猜的方式是说，呃，按照就是我我事后看得到你的期中成绩，但是我至今还看不到你的期末成绩，我只看得到写作的部分，因为那是我改的。但期末的阅读听力那百分之二十，我始终是看不到的，所以我推测的方式是说，呃，如果你期末的上学期的。如果你上学期期末的阅读听力的部分，呃，考了二十分，满分一百考了二十分，你就会过。那如果你真的很衰，瞎猜猜不到四分之一的话，就就过不了。嗯，所以，呃，这部分就是告诉你们，还是要认真的去去上课跟考试，因为即使我想救你，还是会有一点点风险。呃，希望不要就是。啊、呃，因为这一门课，然后还要多读一学年，有点惨。OK， 这是 schedule。然后 Moodle 长这个样子，我的 email 在这边，要联络我的话可以寄信给我，或是用 Teams 去私讯我。如果有要寄全班信的话，这边会留底稿，所以如果你没有收到，或是你忘记内容，哦，你删掉忘记内容的话，可以上来找。嗯、um, ，这个 PowerPoint 通常是我给我们英英系的大一学生的 PowerPoint， 是告诉他们几个学英文以及什么什么待人处事的一些道理。但是我我这边放给你们，是让你们参考学英文的部分。这上学期也许有提过，稍微再提一下。呃，学一个语言跟学，比如说什么历史地理不大一样，它不是说你你有一个。完整的知识体系在那边，然后你学你记多少就是学多少这样子，因为语言是一个是一个技能，有点像演奏乐器，呃，就你知道你你，譬如说钢琴，你知道每一个按键在哪里，然后你知道每个音是什么，但是你未必弹得出来，语言也是这样子，所以学语言最。
到地的方式是用观察的，你观察一下母语人士，嗯、呃，或是英文老师上课如何使用这个语言，所以不只是呃我讲的内容是什么，而是包含。呃，我我讲这个内容，我是用什么样的方式来表达？呃，从发音、单字，甚至文法，也可以这样子学起来，是一种呃规律的认知。观察到，呃，今年累月之下观察到，呃，表述这些内容，通常是用这些方式，然后就是借由一种潜移默化的方式把它吸收进去。这个才是培养语感的方式，啊、呃，所以这 PowerPoint 里面有几个例子跟发音有关，跟文法有关，告诉你说，呃，英文尤其是英文这个流动性的语言，各种定义都在流动，都没有呃，就是举世皆准的一个铁则，文法也是，所以里面就举了几个就比较奇怪的发音跟文法例子，让你知道说，呃，背一些铁则不如用观察来看看。呃，母语人士在表意的时候有哪些方式可以让你们观察学习？好，下一个这个 PDF 是呃，英教中心给我们的考试期程，就是我刚刚跟你讲期中考、期末考范围就在这里。再下一个是呃，英教中心提供的期末写作模拟题目。呃，我我觉得应该可以用这个当当模拟考吧，对，所以你可以看一看，呃，考虑一下，我们模拟考的时候会会实际来说明。接下来这这个 PDF 是课本在最后面提供的就是单字总表，如果你临时找不到你要的单字，可以来这边参考一下。或是呃临时抱佛脚，想多背几个单字，可以来这边查。好，再来这个连接，呃，这门课实际上课的时候会用英文，啊、呃，然后每一堂课会录下来，然后上传 YouTube， 连接会放在木朵上面。啊、呃，我上传 YouTube 而不是直接留在 Team 上面，或是上传木朵的原因，是因为木呃 YouTube 它。会生产文字记录，然后那个文字记录你叫出来之后，你可以用文字搜寻的。所以，呃，如果你想要重看某一堂课的某一个部分，你不用三个小时再从头看，你可以呼叫出那个文字记录，然后用搜寻到你要的那个部分的关键字，点下去，它就会跳到影片的那边。所以我这边录了一个影片，让你知道怎么去做这件事情。好，然后这边是我到时候呃用 Moodle 在算你们的成绩的时候，期中考成绩会放这边，期末写作成绩会放这边，平时成绩会放这边。目前这部分你们看不到。呃，然后成绩输入之后，你可以到右边点 Grade 成绩，嗯、呃，来追踪一下自己的成绩表现目前如何。我在 Moodle 上面统计方式就直接用直接加总法，各种成绩项目加起来等于八十分。呃，没办法一百分，因为刚刚提到期末考的阅读跟听力成绩我看不到，所以顶多会是八十分。你们就算一下嘛，如果就是呃期中考输入了，然后呃我们写过写作模拟测验，然后你自己也知道自己的出缺席情形，呃稍微抓一下你的成绩大概在哪里，可以让你自己追踪一下。好，然后接下来就是呃。课本内容跟上学期一样，我把课本都扫描上去了。嗯，所以不想买课本没关系，但是如果想买课本的话，等一下下课来找我。嗯，纸本总是比较好了，有地方可以抄笔记，解析度也绝对比较清楚。嗯，然后呃，如果忘记带的话，你不用等时间，就是在下载。所以第一堂第一单元的。那个课本内容，然后这个是印交中心给的官方的简报档，然后下面是各种听力档案，第一单元、第三单元、第四单元、第五单元，第二单元，呃，他听力档案特别多，呃，然后下面这边就是每一个单元的影片的部分，呃。
电脑教室那堂课，我想我们先上课本内容，课本内容都上完了，我们再上影片好了。好，然后最下面有这个东西，呃，如果你觉得这学期有点危险，可能不会过，你们可以试试看做这个加分作业。呃，但是这加分作业有点难度，所以请不要仰赖它，真的是不得已。然后，呃，真的觉得就是有危险的时候，你再来做。对，这个部分你可以回去自己看。好，就这样 ，Moodle 长这个样子。嗯、呃，到时候每一堂课的录音录音档我会贴在相应单元附近。呃，今天待会应该会上到第一单元，所以会就会直接贴到第一单元这边，呃，下面这边。好，呃，课程简介大概到这边，我想一下有没有忘掉什么。呀、yeah, ，就这样。好，有要提问吗？好，那我来发一下期末考卷。Okay, let's look at unit one. Cross-border business. Cross-border. A border is the line between two countries. So cross-border means international. Uh, here are some questions you can think about before we get into the reading uh you don't have to give me the answer but you can think about these questions um let's skip to the last question this one if your foreign customer wanted to come to taiwan for both business and fun when and why would you tell them is the best time to come. You can think about um, what kind of events happen in Taiwan throughout the year. Okay, let's take a look at the reading. Doing business across cultures. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll read through it first, uh, and then we will take a closer look. What's it like doing business with people from other countries? Some people say that business is business. However, sometimes doing business with people from other countries is not so simple. You must also understand the way other people think and how their culture affects their thinking. Well-known international businessman, Mr. Chad Rowan, offers some general information about doing business with different cultural groups in his latest book, Doing Business with Aliens, Barbarians, and Foreign Devils. The following excerpts are adapted from his book. Excerpt one. For example, the Spanish Arabs, Chinese, Koreans, and Japanese aren't concerned about how well planned a meeting is. They will not trust anything that doesn't take years to build. For example, a strong relationship of 10 years is more important than a brand new office building or an impressive meeting. Trust is the most important thing for them. They also seldom offer any opinions unless they are sure about what they want to say because they don't want to lose face. Excerpt two. The Chinese also care about their standing or reputation. In fact, much of the way they do business is all about giving face, not losing face. 
Therefore, foreign businessmen have to get used to talking about business, not in the office, but in a KTV golf course at the dinner table, coffee shop or a hotel lobby. In addition, starting a business is a momentous occasion. In fact, many new businesses open every day. But the management skills needed to maintain the growth of the business are oftentimes lacking and the business fails. Therefore, many people claim that Chinese businessmen simply want to make money quickly. Refunds are almost unheard of in Chinese marketing. Excerpt 3. Face is perhaps most important to the Japanese. For example, if you put pressure on a Japanese businessman, he will respond with silence, and your relationship is sure to be over even before it started. The Japanese will also do their very best to show you a good time, especially after a business deal is finished. It is a time for revelry. Many traditional businessmen will celebrate by taking their customers to a place where they can drink, smoke, sing loudly, and simply have a good time. The Japanese will be more accepting of you if you learn to speak a little Japanese and look comfortable with their customs. Excerpt 4. Whenever there seems to be a business problem, the British try to improve the situation by saying something diverting. But sometimes others don't find this humor funny at all. The Italians, on the other hand, want everyone to be humorous. They expect that in a business meeting, everyone should be vivacious and witty, and everyone should be friendlier to each other than usual. However, decisions are not made in such a meeting. Usually, there is a clandestine meeting where the important business decisions are made. Excerpt 5. For some countries, humor is seldom used and being serious is important. For example, if you send a team to Germany or Switzerland to study a business project, the Germans and the Swiss will be the ones to actually study you and ask you questions instead of the other way around. If you have not successfully addressed their questions, they will be very careful about giving you their business. Efficiency and quality are priorities to them. Excerpt 6. For Americans, it's not enough that you want to buy their product. You must let them win you over. They also almost always have to report back to their boss about every single detail. Following procedures is very important. Just like the Scandinavian countries of Denmark, Sweden, Finland, and Norway, Americans care a lot about efficiency, originality, systems, and technology. Much of the business discussed must be accounted for, in other words, explained and clear for all to see. They want results immediately and don't like delays. Excerpt 7. Whenever you disagree with the French, they will enjoy arguing with you in a very lively way. They will offer you a business opportunity more quickly than other cultures, but they will change their minds at the last moment if they feel that you are not doing business in a satisfactory way. Note. The opinions expressed in this lesson are not necessarily those of the author or publisher, 
but are provided only to encourage discussion and language learning based on material that is in the public domain. OK, let's begin with the note. This note is very important. The note is basically saying. Look, all of these ideas. We, the authors of the textbook, may not agree with all of these ideas. We only give them to you so that you can talk about them and maybe you can learn from talking about this stuff. This is important because if you really think about it, all of the ideas above are really stereotypes. Right? If you meet a French person, they're like this. If you meet a Chinese person, they're like that. It's not uh, very politically correct. Uh, we don't like to think about how an entire country or an entire culture behaves. Everyone is different. But we can still talk about um, how to deal with these different kinds of business situations. So let's go back to the top. The structure of this essay is quite clear. Uh, it's, it's a kind of lazy structure. Uh, the author read a book. And he's picking out interesting things from the book. And then he writes a paragraph at the beginning to introduce the book. This kind of structure is more and more common on the Internet. Um, websites need people to visit in order to make money. So some websites will say like this is a new article or this is a new uh, news report. But actually what's in the article is taken from somewhere else. Uh, and it's summarized. Or it's paraphrased. Um, so it's more and more likely that you would come across this kind of article online. Uh, I think that's important to know so that if you already have that information, you would not have to waste time reading somebody else repeating the same information. OK, let's look at. Uh, paragraph one in more detail. What's it like? In other words, what is the experience? How would you describe it? How do you feel about it? And uh, the sentence structure is what's it like verb ing? This is actually um, it's a flipped structure. The, the correct structure should be what is doing business with people from other countries like? Uh, and the reason the structure is flipped is because the verb like is very short. And uh, the subject is very long. And English does not like it when you start long and end short. So in order to put the short part first, uh, you use an empty it. Uh, and therefore you can flip the verb and the noun. So the subject of this sentence, doing business with people from other countries. Some people say that business is business. In other words, it doesn't matter uh, which country the the business person is from. Business is business. Everybody wants the same thing, make money. But the author says some people say. From this, we can tell that the author does not agree. When he says some people, that does not include himself. 
Uh, this is something that uh, writers in English will often do. They will first talk about other people, and then they will talk about what they themselves believe. Right? However, so uh, this is what he really believes. Sometimes doing business with people from other countries is not so simple. It's not just business. You must also understand the way other people think. And how their culture affects their thinking. So we have two ideas. First, you have to know how the other person thinks. What is their logic? What do they care about? Um, that is important for any kind of meeting. If you really want to get something done in that meeting. But the point of this article is the second part. How their culture affects their thinking. Everybody thinks in a different way, but the author believes that people from a similar culture will think in similar ways. Maybe that's true, maybe that's not, but this is what the author thinks. Uh, the author of the, the book below. Well-known international businessman, Mr. Chad Rowan. Uh, general information, so it's not specific information. General information means it is often true. It's not always true, but you can think about this uh, when you enter different situations. Um, information about something. In his latest book, the book title is also kind of it, it's it's uh, offensive on purpose. It's a rude title on purpose. Doing business with aliens. Uh, aliens has two meanings. One, people from outer space, Washington. The other meaning is people from different countries who are not a citizen. Um, and the second meaning is still used today in diplomacy. Barbarians, people who do not have any culture. Uh, this is the traditional term that China has used for foreign people. Uh, in Chinese, we call this man yi zi bang. And foreign devils. Devils are the opposite of angels, right? They're the creatures that live in hell. Um, so foreign devils is also a traditional term for foreigners in, I think, China and Japan. Uh, can't remember. But anyways, the title is supposed to be provocative uh, to, to sort of get you thinking about how different cultures think about people from other countries. Um, I want to emphasize this entire sentence because this sentence is a beautiful sentence. The, the subject is here, the author of the book. The verb offers, gives us. And then the object, information. And everything after information is giving you more details about this information. The sentence uses most available spaces in the grammar to fit all of the necessary information into one sentence. So who is Mr. Chad Rowan? Uh, there's a space before his name where you can add more information. He is a well-known international businessman. Um, what kind of information? There's a space between the verb and the object 
where you can add more details, some general information. And what is this information about? There's a lot of space after the object about doing business with people uh, from different cultural groups. And then uh, the sentence tells us where does he give us this information in his latest book? And then you need to be able to tell us the name of the book. So the author adds a comma. This is known in grammar as an, a positive comma. Uh, and the function of this comma is whatever noun is before the comma is the same thing as whatever noun is after the comma. Before and after talk about the same thing. So before the comma, his latest book. After the comma, the title of the book. With this structure, we know that these two things are talking about the same book. So it's a beautiful sentence. Lots of information, well written, very smooth. Uh, and then excerpts. This word means selections taken from the book. But here it doesn't use the word taken, it uses the word adapted. To adapt means to change in some way. Um, so it's taken from his book, but it's been rewritten or changed, um, I think, so that it would um, fit in a textbook. The sentences would be simple enough for a textbook. Following means below, so following excerpts means the selections below. Uh, right. So the first one is about the Spanish, Shibanyaren, Arabs, Alaborin, Chinese, Koreans, and Japanese. Uh, remember, this textbook was written, I think, in 2003. And so the, the book where they took these ideas from is probably even older. So it's saying that these people don't really care about how well planned a meeting is. They don't trust anything that doesn't take years to build. So these people, according to the author, only care about things that have taken time. That, you, that uh, have taken lots of time in order to create. So to give an example, the author compares two things. The first thing is a strong relationship of 10 years. It takes a lot of time. The other thing is a brand new office building. Or an impressive meeting, a meeting that went very well. A very good meeting. According to the author, these people care more about the first thing than they do about these things, because these things can be done very quickly. Uh, so the key point is here, trust is the most important thing for them. So this is related to having to spend a lot of time. I think the idea here is if you are willing to spend a lot of time to build something, that means that we can trust you, that we can depend on you for a long time. Uh, and then the next point, they seldom, which means not often, give any opinions unless they are sure about what they want to say. So they never give a guess. They only share their ideas when they are absolutely sure. And the reason, according to the author, is because they don't want to lose face. Uh, and then the next one, the Chinese also care about their standing or reputation. Hey, 
um, also care about their standing or reputation. Here, the word or is also an, a positive or, just like that comma. Um, everything before or, uh, sorry, the noun before or and the noun after or mean the same thing. So standing just means reputation, ming yu, how other people uh, think about them. And in fact, uh, the word also tells us that here the word face also means standing or reputation. So these three words mean the same thing. And then notice that the author here uses a semicolon, fen hao, which tells us that before and after these two sentences mean uh, are, are connected. They're talking about something similar. Um, but in terms of grammar, they are still two complete sentences. So much of the way they do business is all about giving face, not losing face. So making other people look good and therefore making themselves look good instead of looking bad. Therefore, um, although I don't think there is really a connection between the first sentence and the second sentence, um, this is a writing trick. If you don't think there's a connection, add a therefore, and maybe the reader won't notice. Foreign businessmen have to get used to talking about business, not in the office, but in a KTV. Uh, there should this should be on a golf course at the dinner table, coffee shop. Uh, this should be at a coffee shop. And this should be in a hotel lobby. So let's see, a hotel lobby is the space in on the first floor of the hotel where they have couches and sofas and tables and like you can order snacks and coffee. Da ting. Um, so I, what I wanted to point out is that in this sentence structure, if one noun follows another noun like this, right? Comma and then a noun. This means that uh, the second noun, golf course, uses the same preposition and article as the first noun. Uh, uh, but in this case, that's not correct because you are in a KTV, but you are on a golf course. Same mistake here. You are at the dinner table, but you are at a coffee shop and same mistake here you are at a coffee shop but you are in a hotel lobby so really like this sentence every noun should have its own preposition and article another thing i want to point out is that english only has one kind of comma 英文没有顿号英文里面顿号是用逗点 So it's making a list but the comma looks exactly the same as when it's not making a list like over here So like in Chinese a regular comma goes to the left uh, a comma for a list goes to the right but in English it's the same comma they all go to the left and when you're writing in pen, please make your comma bigger so that I can tell the difference between a comma and a period. 
你用手写的时候，麻烦逗点撇长一点，我才能够分出什么是逗点，什么是句点。Okay, so according to the author, um, because the Chinese care about face, therefore they do business everywhere. I don't think there's a connection between these two ideas. Uh, if you think there's a connection, please tell me. In addition, starting a business is a momentous occasion. So momentous comes from the noun moment. Like a point in time. Uh, it just means important. It's an important moment. Momentous. Uh, occasion here means situation. Uh, so momentous occasion in Chinese would probably be like uh, Long Zhong Chang He. In fact, many new businesses open every day, but the management skills needed to maintain the growth of the business. Are oftentimes lacking, lacking to lack something means to not have something. Uh, so here the author is saying that Chinese people love to start new businesses, but they often don't know how to keep the business growing, the growth of the business to make it expand. Uh, and it says are because the noun in the previous sentence is skills. Which is a plural. And in between this is a relative clause as a guantai. That are needed to maintain the growth of the business. So the noun is skills. Skills are oftentimes lacking. Uh, today, the word oftentimes is one word. English has a tendency to combine words. First, it will be two words. Then it will be connected with a hyphen, Lian Jie Hao, and then it will become one word. So oftentimes today is one word. Uh, okay, so they lack business skills and the business fails. Therefore, okay, so this connection makes more sense, I think. Many people claim, this is an important word, claim. They say, they think. But is it true? We don't know. Uh, so in Chinese, claim means shenchen. That Chinese businessmen simply want to make money quickly. Refunds is where they give your money back to you. Are almost unheard of. To be unheard of means nobody has heard of this situation. In Chinese marketing. This is also interesting. Why does it say marketing? Marketing is the skill of getting other people to want to buy your stuff. Xingxiao. No, that's not right. Guang Gao. Um, so. I guess it's saying that when you see Chinese businesses and you see their commercials, they never offer a refund. Because if the author says marketing, he's talking about commercials. Uh, and he's not talking about the other parts of business. I just think that's kind of strange. Anyway, yeah, so uh, marketing in Chinese is guang gao and Xingxiao is sales. Marketing is making other people want to buy your stuff. Sales is actually selling them the stuff. Uh, so it's two different things. Uh, okay, three. B face, again, the idea of reputation, a good name. Face is perhaps most important to the Japanese. To be important 
to somebody. So somebody thinks that it is important. For example, if you put pressure on, or you can simply use pressure as a verb. If you pressure, if you put pressure on a Japanese businessman, he will respond with silence. Uh, so he doesn't say anything. And your relationship is sure to be over even before it started. This is a common phrase. It's over before it begins. It's over before it starts. Uh, it just means it's over very quickly. Is sure to be. It's um, looking to the future. In Chinese, we call this tweeting yu qi. The Japanese will also do their very best. So not just do their best, but do their very best. Emphasis, chang diao. To show you a good time, so to let you have fun. Especially after a business deal is finished. It is a time for revelry. To revel, the verb revel means to celebrate. So revelry is a very polite way of saying partying. It's time to party. Many traditional businessmen will celebrate, right? Celebrate, revelry by taking their customers to a place where they can drink, smoke, sing loudly, and simply have a good time. The Japanese will be more accepting of you. To be accepting of someone just means that I like they accept you. They, they are willing to work with you. To be accepting. If you learn to speak a little Japanese and look comfortable with their customs, customs are cultural habits, the way that different cultures do things, like uh, how they eat, how they dress, how they talk to each other. To look comfortable with means that uh, you don't think it's strange. You think it's quite natural. You're very comfortable in this environment. You yourself don't look uh, nervous, afraid. OK, let's take a short break. Uh, we'll come back at 10 10.
OK, let's continue. Excerpt four. Whenever there seems to be a business problem. So seems to be so whenever it looks like there is a business problem. The British try to improve the situation by saying something diverting. The word divert means to change direction. Here it means something to distract you, to entertain you, something fun. Um, so like when there's a problem, the British try to joke and make the atmosphere feel less serious. But sometimes others don't find this humor funny at all. At all here means absolutely not. So, you know, it's the very dry British humor. The Italians, on the other hand, Italian, want everyone to be humorous. They expect that in a business meeting, everyone should be vivacious and witty. The word vivacious means lively, energetic, full of energy, and like a uh, um, um, extroverted and wai xiang yang guang de. And witty, which means funny with words. Ji zi yu mu. And everyone should be friendlier to each other than usual. So, according to the author, Italians are more friendly in a business meeting than they are in daily life. Notice that the word friendly, even though it ends with an ly, is not an adverb. It is an adjective. However, and there should be a comma here. Decisions are not made in such a meeting. Usually there is a clandestine meeting. Clandestine means secret. There is a secret meeting, clandestine meeting, where the important business decisions are made. So according to the author, the Italians will arrive at a business meeting, have a lot of fun, talk with everybody, and then they will have another secret meeting to make the actual decisions. Next one. Uh, for some countries, humor is seldom used, so not often used. And being serious is important. For example, uh, again, I don't think this is an example of the idea. Uh, let's take a look. If you send a team to Germany or Switzerland, Reisi, uh, to study a business project, the Germans and the Swiss. So here it gives you uh, people from Switzerland are called Swiss. Uh, notice how to spell Switzerland. There's a Z in the middle. Uh, the Germans and the Swiss will be the ones to actually study you and ask you questions. So you think you're going over there to learn about the project, but actually you're going over there so that the Germans and the Swiss can learn about you. Uh, right, instead of the other way around. Uh, that's some, this is a phrase you should know, the other way around. Uh, in English, you will sometimes see the phrase vice versa. This is from Latin. It means the same thing. The other way around, vice versa.
if you have not successfully addressed their questions. Uh, so not just answer, but to address. To address means to like uh, to take care of, to deal with. The idea here is that they are asking these questions for a reason. So it's not enough just to give an answer. You also have to um, make sure that their reasons are taken care of. So not just answer the question, but also help them understand why they are asking the question in the first place. Uh, so if you don't do this, they will be very careful about giving you their business. To be very careful here simply means they will not give you their business. It's a very soft way of saying no. Uh, in English, we call this a euphemism, wei wan si. Efficiency and quality are priorities. So you have to do things quickly, but you also have to do things well. Uh, priority means something that they care about. Uh, sometimes we'll say something is a high priority. So think of all the things you care about and you put them in a list. A high priority is something you care most about and a low priority is something you care least about. But if there's no list, if there's no higher or lower, then a priority is simply something that they care about. For Americans, it's not enough that you want to buy their product. You must let them win you over. So we know that to win means not to lose, right? To come in first, you win the game. But to win someone over means to convince someone. So here the author is saying uh, for Americans, it's not enough for you to agree to the deal. You also have to believe in the deal. So like it's not enough to say, OK, OK, fine, we'll do it. You actually have to jump in and agree and believe this is a good deal. You have to let the Americans win you over, convince you. Uh, they also almost always have to report back to their boss about every single detail. This could be important information uh, if you are negotiating with an American. Usually when uh, you negotiate, um, you should have some power to say yes or no, or to, to there's some range of options that you can accept. But here the author is saying that the Americans do not have that space. Every detail they have to talk about with their boss. So that could be useful information uh, to let you know what to expect when you're negotiating with Americans. And according to the author, following procedures is very important. A procedure is the uh, proper steps to do things. A step by step. Just like the Scandinavian countries. What are the Scandinavian countries? This of is also an a positive of. of. So again, the noun before is the same thing as the noun after. So before it says the Scandinavian countries, after it gives you four countries. So these four countries are the Scandinavian countries. Uh, Scandinavia is Northern Europe. So there are, I think there are five countries in, in Northern Europe, right? The four here, Denmark, Denmark, Sweden, Radian, 
Finland, Finland, Norway, Norway. And the fifth one is Iceland, Bingdao. But it's an island. It's not part of the, the main land of Europe. So it, Iceland is part of Northern Europe, but it's not a Scandinavian country. Uh, so just like these countries, Americans care a lot about efficiency, originality, systems and technology. Uh, originality here means creativity, Chuang Yi. Systems, that's interesting. So the Americans, according to the author, don't just want one good deal. They want to create a system for the future so that future deals can also go smoothly. Much of the business discussed must be accounted for. Um, the author knows that this might not be clear what this means, so he adds IE. IE means in other words. Uh, it's from the Latin. IE is it est. And it est in English is that is. So in other words, uh, explained and clear for all to see. So that's what the author means when he says accounted for. Everything discussed must be explained and clear for all to see. They want results immediately and don't like delays. Uh, a delay just means taking more time. And number seven, when you disagree with the French, they will enjoy arguing with you in a very lively way, so full of energy. Um, so, you know, some people don't like to argue. The French, according to the author, love to argue. They will offer you a business opportunity, so a deal, more, quick, uh, more quickly than other cultures, but they will change their minds at the last moment if they feel that you are not doing business in A, it's missing an A, in a satisfactory way. Satisfactory, uh, you can see the word satisfied, manzuda. So satisfactory means to, to feel like you are satisfied, to make sure that everybody thinks it's a good deal. So. Uh, this is saying that the French will give you a deal very quickly, according to the author. But if they think that you're not doing a good job, they might take back the deal. At the last moment. At the very end. Uh, and then we can take a closer look at this note. Uh, in Chinese, basically, it means right? the opinions or ideas expressed in this lesson are not necessarily those, those means uh, the opinions of the author or publisher, uh, but are provided only to, in order to, Encourage discussion and language learning based on material, so things that you can find. That is in the public domain. This is an interest, this is an important idea. In the public domain, uh, which means that there is no copyright. Copyright has expired or there is no copyright. The public domain is a legal term from the law. It refers to everything that belongs to everybody, every idea that belongs to everybody. Uh, so usually it's talking about books, music, art um, that has no copyright. So you are free to make copies. You are free to to 
sell them if you want to. Like works in the public domain, you can uh, repackage them and you can sell them. So like for really old works of literature, uh, publishers can create books and they don't have to pay somebody else for the right and they can sell those books for money. At the same time, you don't have to buy those books. You can find that information online for free. Um, so that's what the public domain is. Uh, in Chinese, I think we call this gong yu, something like that. Okay. Um, change their minds. So they will change their decisions. Okay, do you have questions about the reading? Okay, let's take a look at the vocabulary. Let's see, did we uh, forget anything? Well, we can we can um, give some more details about these words. Priority, something you care about. If you have many things that you care about, sometimes people will say you need to prioritize. I Z E in English means uh, to make or to do. In Chinese, 什么什么话, I Z E and I F Y uh, mean to transform. So to prioritize means to take all of these things you care about and to put them in order from high priority to low priority so that you are not confused about what you should do next. Refund. It says here this is a noun, but it could also be a verb. To refund your money means to give your money back uh, after you cancel a deal. It does not mean to give your money back after someone borrows your money. That is return, return your money. Refund is um, uh, pay is right. Uh, and the word comes from fund. F U N D is a, a pot of money, like a collection of money. So to refund, to give money again. So to give back your money after a canceled deal. Standing, as the textbook tells us, means reputation, a good name. Why, right? The, the root word is stand, um, So the idea is if you have a good reputation, you can stand up, stand out, and let people see you. You're not afraid to let people see you. Uh, standing can mean reputation. It could also mean credit, xing lai, uh, xing yong, like in terms of money. So if you're in good standing, that means you don't owe people money. Okay, verb, address. Uh, of course, this could also be a noun, right? Your address, where you live. An, uh, um, to address someone, if your object is a person, to address someone means to talk to someone. If you are addressing a large group of people, you are giving a speech. And so address as a noun, okay, so address is where you live. Address as a noun is the the content of your speech. When you give a speech, the thing you are talking about is your address. Um, so to address someone is to talk to someone, but to address something is to begin to deal with something. 
Uh, so English has six verb phrases that mean similar things. Uh, address, face, deal with, tackle, handle, cope with. Uh, but each mean a slightly different thing. Uh, let's talk about these similar words. So we just talked about address. To begin to deal with something to if address means to talk to someone, then to address something means you're turning toward the problem. You are beginning to take care of the problem. So it means something similar to. Face to face a problem, you're beginning to to deal with the problem. To deal with, of course, just means to take care of to to solve the problem. To handle the problem. Means that you make it no longer a problem. It your solution may not be perfect, but it is no longer something people have to worry about. Uh, to tackle a problem means that you were going to deal with this problem and it's a very hard problem and you may not solve the problem, but you are trying your best. You are in the process of dealing with this problem. And then finally to. This. A problem means you probably can't solve the problem, but you can make it less of a problem so that people don't have to worry about it too much. Um, so when you have a problem, these are six verb phrases you can use in terms of trying to solve a problem. OK, let's see adjectives clandestine secret. Uh, the spelling is. Somewhat strange. Remember how to spell this word clandestine. Diverting, we talked about this humorous humor is. Um, the the state of being funny. Originally, the word humor meant um, OK, so in the Middle Ages, doctors believed that uh, the human body had four main kinds of liquid, ET, and that these four liquids had to be in balance for a person to be healthy. Uh, and each one of those liquids is, was called a humor. Uh, and if your humors were out of balance in one way, your personality would change in that way. If you had too much of another humor, your personality would change in a different way. So uh, in that sense, humor became related to personality. Uh, and then after many years of history today, only one part of uh, personality is left in relation to this word, which is being funny. Moment, uh, momentous, we talked about that. Account for, which means that you can explain something to people. You understand something. You can uh, give an account. The word account today, usually as a noun, means like something you open at a bank or like something you create on a website. Zhang hao hu tou. It comes from the bank. When you open a bank account, what that means is the bank now has a record of how much money you put in 
and how much money you take out. It's a record. So when you want to know how much money you have, you can ask the bank and they have that record. The record itself is called an account. So the verb is to be able to explain the account. If you can account for your money, that means you know where your money is. You know how much there is. Uh, and so this is related to the word accounting. And accountant, accountant is Kuai Ji Si. Because they know the record of the money. Uh, accounting is the field uh, of the accountant, Kuai Ji Shui. So to account for, you have a record, you can explain what's going on. Uh, you can say uh, you can account for something, right? You have a record. You can also account for someone, which means uh, you know where the person is, you know what they have been doing. Let's see, be concerned about means to care about. Um, sometimes Taiwanese people will use concern as a verb. That's not right. You have to use the passive. Yeah, you on the fancy. Be concerned about. Uh Because the word concern as a verb, the subject is the thing. Something concerns somebody. This is the opposite direction uh, from Chinese. In Chinese, it's somebody cares about something. So someone is concerned about something. Put pressure on, we talked about that. Show someone a good time, we talked about that. Win over, talked about that. Revelry, also talked about this. You don't really need to know the word revelry. You're not going to see this word. OK, do you have questions about the words? OK, um, let's do some reading exercises. So this is true or false, 是非题, 15 questions uh, based on the reading. So let's see, 15 questions. Hmm. 40, 50. OK, I'll give you. Hmm. Let's take a long break now and during the break, please answer these questions. And I will meet you at the other classroom and we will compare answers. Okay, so let's look at these questions. Question one. The Spanish trust only Arabs because their history goes back 20 years. This is false. The textbook uh, does say that the Spanish um, trust things that have taken a long time but it does not mention trusting Arabs. Number two, the Koreans like to hold a lot of meetings. This is false. The textbook did not say that anyone likes to hold a lot of meetings. Number three, Many Chinese businessmen are very good at starting a business. This is true. The textbook says that Chinese businessmen 
enjoy starting businesses, um, but they're not very good at growing businesses. Number four, many Chinese businessmen do not care about improving the management skills of their employees. This is false. The textbook did not say anything about employees for any culture. Number five, the Japanese like to show their foreign customers a good time before doing business together. This is false. The textbook says that the Japanese like to show their foreign customers a good time after doing business together. Number six, the Japanese appreciate a foreigner who can speak their language. This is true. Number seven, according to the reading, the British are not very good at telling jokes. This is true. The textbook says that when things get awkward, the British like to make jokes, but that some people don't think that they are funny. Number eight. According to the reading, the Italians don't make their final decisions in big meetings. This is true. The textbook tells us that the Italians make their decisions in secret meetings. Number nine, the Germans and the Swiss ask more questions than others. This is false. The textbook says that the Germans and the Swiss will ask questions about you when you don't expect it. But it doesn't tell us who asks more questions. Number 10, German and Swiss business people are less humorous than others. This is true. The textbook tells us that for Germans and Swiss, humor is not often used and it is important to be serious. Number 11, American business practices are similar to those found in Denmark, Sweden, Finland, and Norway. This is true. Number 12, Americans don't like to copy ideas from other people. This is true. The textbook tells us that Americans care about originality, being original. Number 13, the French are very difficult to satisfy because they have very high business standards. This is false. The textbook tells us that if you don't satisfy a French business person, they may cancel the deal at the last moment. It does not tell us whether it is easy to satisfy a French business person or not. Number 14, it is a good idea to disagree with the French because they appreciate people who are honest about what they don't like. This is false. The textbook tells us that if you disagree with a French person, they will love to argue with you. It does not tell us whether the French like to argue, uh, as opposed to not arguing because there's no need to argue. 
15. The French will decide quickly if they'll give you their business, but they can be just as quick taking their business away from you. This is true. Okay, do you have questions about these questions? Let's look here. Um, these are some things that you can check when you are studying by yourself. When you encounter a new word and you want to learn this word, make sure that you can do all seven of these uh, to make sure that you really understand this word. So the first one, you find the meaning of the word in your dictionaries. That's the basic step, the first step. Number two, you know how to pronounce the word and you know where the stress is. You know uh, which part of the word to emphasize. The third step, you know the meaning you know each word's noun, verb, and adjective forms. So if the word should be a noun, you know what it looks like. If it should be a verb, you know what it looks like. If it should be an adjective, you know what it looks like. Number four, you can make a grammatically correct sentence with the words. This shows that you truly understand the grammar of this word. Number five, you understand how the word is used in the text. So you understand the grammar and you also know which kind of grammar the textbook is using or the thing that you're reading where you find this word. Number six, I know how to pronounce the word correctly. So, not just where is the stress, but you can say the word and it will sound correct. And seven, you know how to paraphrase the word. If you need to explain the word in English, you can explain it in English, or you can find another word that means something similar. This shows that you truly understand the meaning of the word. So when you're studying by yourself and you come across a new English word, you can run through this checklist to make sure you truly understand the word and the grammar of the word. Uh, let's look at page six. Here we have a list of tourist attractions in Taiwan. Um, maybe you've heard of these, or I mean, some of them are not attractions, some of them are just characteristics. But before we look at this list, I want you to notice in the first line it says, look at the following items. If a foreign business traveler asks you honestly to tell him three good things and three bad things about Taiwan. What would you say? Hint. Of course, today, a business traveler does not have to be a man. So I suggest that you say them, even if it's just one person. This is called singular they, because English does not have a person pronoun for someone that is not a man or a woman. So instead, you could use the word they to refer to one person. So honestly tell them three good things, three bad things. OK, so let's look at this list of uh, special characteristics of Taiwan. A, Young Ho Soybean Milk Restaurant. I think this is your little job. So the uh, it's the plant used to make soy milk. Uh, soy milk is of course doya. 
be traffic jams. I'm pretty sure there are traffic jams everywhere around the world. C. Chinese food restaurants. Yes. Uh, most of our culture comes from China, so we do have Chinese food restaurants. Four. Linsen North Road. Linsen Beiyu. So this is a place with uh, older nightlife. Yes, uncle. Uh, again, this textbook was written in 2003. Uh, nightlife today is not. You can find newer nightlife around Zhonghua uh, North Road, Zhonghua South Road, Zhonghua Nanyang. Uh, Linsen is the older kind of nightlife. E. Two to eight Peace Park. Or uh, I'll be going. I'm sure you can guess. F. Beetle Nut. Bingong. G. Coffee and tea shops. I read somewhere that Taipei has the highest density of coffee shops in the world. So, yes, it's a special part of culture in Taiwan. H. Night markets. Taiwan is not the only place in the world with night markets, but night markets are often quite big and uh, noisy and bustling in Taiwan. I. Guanghua Computer Market, Guanghua Samsung. J. Taipei World Trade Center, Simao uh, Dongjing. I don't think this is really a tourist attraction unless there is some kind of event. K. Taipei City Zoo, Dongwu. A lot of these are from Taipei. Very Taipei-centric list. L. Zhang Haishek Memorial Hall. Zhongnan Jin Yan Hall. M. Tamasui Fisherman's Wharf, also known as Yuren Mato. Yuren Mato. That's Yuren Mato. Uh, this is not spelled right. It should be Y-U, not Y-U-I. There's no reason for there to be an I there. Here, why you? And Xin Tian Taoist Temple, Xin Tian Gong. Again, the name is not spelled right. It should be H S I N G. Missing a G here. Oh, National Palace Museum. P. Smog in air pollution. E. My Smog is bad air, basically. I think it, it's gotten better over time. Uh, back before Taipei had an MRT, the air pollution was much worse. Q. Snake Alley. So shall. Do you guys know what this is? Uh, I looked it up. Apparently, it's Hua Xi Jian Ye Shi. You are a so shall. The place of the town. Um. So alley, A L L E one. We usually translate that as shall. Um, but actually, according to Taiwan's post office, alley should be long, xiang long, uh, and xiang is lane, L A N E, lane. L A N E. Okay. Uh, R, dangerous and reckless drivers. Reckless means they don't care about the rules. I think Taiwan has improved uh, in this part. Our drivers, I think, have gotten a bit better. 
Uh, and a lot of the reason for bad driving in Taiwan is because the roads are, are sometimes not designed very well. If people can easily follow road directions, then they will. They only drive badly when they can't follow directions or they're in a hurry. So if you have better road design, you will have better drivers. S. Foreign food restaurants. Okay, so you have Chinese food restaurants and you have foreign food restaurants. That's all of the restaurants. There is no third kind of restaurant. Uh, so obviously, yes, everywhere in the world will have local restaurants and foreign restaurants. Not quite sure if that is a special characteristic of Taiwan. T, bus or taxi drivers. Pretty sure everywhere in the world you have buses and taxis. Uh, taxis. So I'm not quite sure why this is on the list. U, Longsan Temple. Again, somewhere in Taipei, Longsan Si. V, late night food vendors. A vendor is someone who sells something. So people who sell you food at night. You might think, what's so special about that? But in most places around the world, after dinner, you, it's very hard to find food. If you go to the US, if you go to like Europe, restaurants close after dinner, there's nowhere to buy snacks. Um, so like in Taiwan, our convenience stores are very special. Nowhere else in the world, I think except in Japan, right? only in Taiwan and Japan, are convenience stores so convenient. Open 24-7, they sell fresh food, uh, you can pay your bills, it's a very special thing. So late night food vendors, yes, it's a special part of Taiwan culture. W, Sun Yat-sen Memorial Hall, uh, X, Quanbu Plains, Quanbu Pingmen. Also in Taipei. Why? It says here Window on China, but actually they changed their name. The current name is Window on the World. And in Chinese, this is Shari Wu. And finally, Z. Leo Fu Animal Safari Park. This has also changed its name. It is now Leo Fu Village Theme Park. Leo Fu Sun. And it's also so wrong. It should be L E E O F O O. Two O's at the end. Okay, so. Uh, we have 26 things, and then below we have uh, 20 questions, and each question you should choose a thing. So, um, I will give you 20 minutes to do these questions, 15 minutes to do these questions. Uh, and then we will compare answers. Uh, I know you, if you look at teams, you probably can't see all the questions at the same time. Uh, you might have to download the file from Google. Not Google, Moodle. Okay, Microsoft doesn't recognize the word Moodle. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about.
Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, let's take a look at these questions. Number one, the terrible B, traffic jams, makes uh, people unnecessarily stay on the road for a very long time. Uh, it should be make, but traffic jams is plural, it should be make. Number two, the O, oh, National Palace Museum, has the largest collection of Chinese historical items in the world. The word item just means thing. Uh, sometimes it means point. Number three, the deadly P. Smog and air pollution causes many people to have breathing problems. Uh, in this case, the verb causes, singular, is correct. Even though smog and air pollution are two things, here we are taking these two things as, or we're putting them together. So we're looking at them as one thing. Number four. The Chu Snake Alley is famous for delicious Taiwanese food and strange foods like turtles, ugui, snakes, and monkeys. Uh, here the word food is plural because you're counting different kinds of food. Five, D, Lidsen North Road, is called the combat zone where people fight by some foreigners with its many motels, nightclubs, bars, and shops. So, motel, motel, nightclub, yi Number six, our are dangerous and reckless drivers cause many accidents on the road because they drive for many hours, some without taking a rest. Oh, uh, the semicolon here is incorrect. There should not be a semicolon. This should be a comma. Number seven, increasingly there are a number of outdoor places where people of all ages can relax and enjoy nature. People of all ages. So older people, younger people, people of all ages. Of. Like the Da'an Park, the Tianbu Exercise Park, and the X, Guandu Plains, beside the ocean. Uh, Tianbu today is spelled without an O, so it's M-U, Tianbu. Number eight, fewer and fewer Taiwanese men chew and spit F, beetle nuts, on the ground, especially in the cities. So here, Fetal nut is uncountable because it is a kind of snack. You're not, you don't care how many each man uh, eats. To chew means to to uh, put in your mouth, and to spit means to, to spit it out, to chew Number nine, the many and uh, the many modern and traditional C. Chinese food restaurants serve many delicious Chinese dishes. Uh, the word dish originally meant the plate, uh, but here it also means the food. Serve means to bring out, to offer, to give, to sell. Number 10. 
there are many modern pets, foreign food restaurants serving food from around the world. Number 11, the many G, coffee and tea shops where you can drink and relax are popular everywhere. Uh, usually the word drink, if you don't say what you are drinking, it means alcohol, so this is not entirely correct, where you can drink coffee and tea, but the, the question can't say coffee or tea because that's the answer. Uh, so you should know the word drink without an object means alcohol. Number 12, H, night Marxists in Siling, Huai Xi Street, Rao Street, Tonghua Street, and other locations are open almost the whole day and offer a very wide range of things to buy. Are they open the whole day? What, if that's true, why do we call it a night market? Anyway, um, a wide range of, which means many different kinds of. Number 13, A, Yonghe Soybean Milk Restaurant, sells the most famous soybean milk in Taiwan. Number 14, for the most beautiful and romantic view of the sunset, and the boardwalk. A boardwalk is a, a, a walkway made up of wooden boards. Uh, I'm not quite sure what this is in Chinese. It's Let me, let me look this up. Mubalu uh, is what uh, Google says. Uh, go to N, Tamsui Fisherman's Court, area model. That looks somewhat like the famous Fisherman's Court in San Francisco is model. This, that is incorrect. You cannot use the word that to begin a relative clause after a comma. You must use which. Number 15, traditional Buddhist temples like the Yu, Long San Temple, are popular stops. The word stop means place. It's a popular place to visit. Uh, Buddhist for John. Number 16. Visit a traditional Taoist temple like the N. Xingtian Taoist Temple on Mingchuan East Road. 17. The many 24 hour convenience stores in V, late night food vendors, serve snacks and hot meals. 18, V, K, Taipei City Zoo in Muza has a large collection of animals. Collection of, so you have a group of, you have many, using the word of, collection of. 19, at, why? Window on the world. You can see small models of famous buildings in Taiwan and the world all in one day. Model washing. And uh, the earlier was Buddhist for Jodo. 20. The L. Chiang Kai shek Memorial Hall which is right across from the Central Library, uh, it is great for exercising, feeding the fish, skating, uh, survival, kite flying, 
as well as relaxing. Okay, you have questions about these? If you don't have questions, I'll see you next week. <laughs>